you're watching the Northeast Arts and Culture Show, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at NEAACTV or hashtag the same, and find us on Facebook by searching Northeast Arts and Culture Show. So get involved. Stu Herring has stirred up the Northeast art scene with his performance based shows, often putting himself in uncomfortable situations that test the body's endurance. From building a brick wall round himself to submerging himself in water, we had a lot to ask Stu about the nature of his work. How did you get into art? Um, I decided when I was eight year old that I wanted to be an artist. Um, my dad took a trip to the Netherlands and brought me back a book of Van Gogh. And then I decided from there. Uh, I think I even sort of said that I disliked school so much that I wanted to go to art school. <laughs> so why performance art specifically? Um, well, I went through a lot of different avenues in art. Um, when I started at university, I ended up choosing sculpture as my specialist area, and I can produce sort of classical style sculpture. And you know, it's like I am interested in painting, and I like looking at painting. But I think performance has this element of freedom to it, where it can be just about anything. But I think there's equal amounts of sort of uh, risk with that. I think there's a lot of performance that sort of could potentially sort of just be abusing the fact that I can't be anything. I think like I'm, I do take my time to specifically plan out how it, every element of a performance looks, the same way as a painter would apply paint or a certain colour of paint or a canvas to incite a certain thought or sort of evoke a certain feeling. I do use like uh, quite heavily laden symbols within my work, um, the same as say a sculptor or like a, a modern sculptor would use and um, sort of describe a particular element. Yeah. Did you find it quite a, a difficult thing to get into as a career? Because I guess quite a few people might do it as a hobby but not mm. necessarily... I, I don't think I was very career driven. Like, um, uh, like sort of my dad had said to me, he was like, you can do anything you want, he's like, as long as you don't do nothing. So it's like, I sort of tied with doing other jobs and things like that, like I sort of thought about going into industry and opposed to going into art. What's the favourite maybe performance-based piece specifically that you've done? So the piece that I've probably put down to being the, the inspiration for the rest of the stuff that I've done recently was I stood for eight hours in one position in, in the centre of Groningen in Holland and the police turned up and asked me what I was doing after three hours and but I'd set rules like I wasn't allowed to explain that I'm an artist, I'm not allowed to say what I was doing so I ended up telling them oh, I'm admiring this clock tower and end up sort of like gathering a bit of a crowd and the police ended up telling people to move on because I was doing nothing and I kind of liked that idea that I was doing nothing but then causing all that sort of commotion around it it was, it was a both scary and fun so, <laughs> yeah. so do you do it because you think that it could potentially be quite an interesting kind of form of social commentary or do you do you just kind of do it without really knowing what the consequences might be? Considering that um, one of my major pieces from earlier on was my final show piece for my BA which was chaining myself with a block of concrete and hammering my way out with an eight pound sledgehammer over an hour it was like in comparison to that and submerging myself for a few hours in the war now like sort of sitting on a pole in the sea it's like it's a lot sort of uh, it used to be very aggressive for the viewer whereas now it's probably a more calm experience so what are those things meant to mean to the viewer well i want to get the viewer thinking about the situation that they're in so they're they're viewing me perform something which is based upon sort of like holy men's tasks uh, like the sadhus in india or the starlights who were pole sitters and they would sit and preach on top of poles for years on end. They would live on top of these structures and people would come to see them for enlightenment of sorts. And they believed that through their enlightenment, through the task, it would filter down through the other people. But whereas I don't believe in the otherworldly, so I think that the tasks that I perform will make people think about the environment and their setting in the world or possibly what reason I'm doing it for. But then it's like... I'd never expect to transfer my full idea to them of why I do it because I get a personal gain from it in the sense that I'm performing it but I think when people watch it it's this more awe-inspiring element it's kind of like somebody climbing a mountain or walking across the Antarctic it's not for a particular reason but we find it impressive just by the nature of what it is. So you're not necessarily trying to 
kind of invoke religious thoughts in people or anything like that. It's it's just a certain. It, it just happens to be that that was your inspiration. Yeah, well, I, I focus a lot on sort of existentialism and the the idea that there is no religion or otherworldly sort of elements. So. It, I want people to think about the here and now and sort of the life that they're in, in opposed to considering something beyond this. Like I want, but then it's it's how much of that gets across to my viewers. So what, what type of reactions have you got? Um, I've I've had everything from sort of like outright rage, like somebody told my mum once because they pinpointed it as being my mum that she was a bad mother because. Um, my performances. It was one of my earlier ones, and I stood on a block of ice with a noose around my neck, and <laughs> so people were quite upset by that. And then I think with my more recent ones, it's been sort of more toned down. It's like the reactions have been mainly people sort of find it humorous, um, but then there, there's quite a, a varied opinion where people find it sort of like awe inspiring, or they say that they feel some sort of connection to it, or it, and I, I think it's probably gained through the worry of my own personal safety, but like I think in, in that same sense, it makes them feel a part of that occasion, which I quite like. Yeah. You said about your kind of personal gain from doing performance that. What would you say that your personal gain is from that? Um, every time I perform, um, especially now that I, I think about the consequence of what would happen, um, so I, I think about how I'm going to think differently after I've performed it. I usually sort of come out of performance and like feel very calm um, considering some of the extreme situations I put myself in. Yeah. Um, and what about your plans for the fairly recent future? Or well I've got I've got a few ideas for 2015 and I'm sort of looking at um, there's a piece that I've exhibited an initial drone for which is a floating temple which I hope to try and do it with Kielder um, which would consist of me living in a pretty much a floating shed with a wood burner and some food for a couple of weeks um, and then I'm planning on trying to build a boat and sail all the way down the north time. The tidal stew would be a time mouth um, and it consists of a 16 foot telegraph pole being planted in, at low tide um, I'd sit on top of it and then let the tide draw in around me and it'd be sat on top of it about 16 hours um, as the tide's in and then once it's out I'll come back down again but I've, I've hit the obvious red tape with the council over it so I'm just hammering out the final details for that and working with engineers to try and get it up and running. Um, so do, do you have a job alongside this? Yeah well I've got a studio next door where I work with um, people with autism um, with a group called Inspired Support. Um, Does that influence you at all in your art? Um, I, I, I ask them about what they think about my artwork, just out of interest to see um, like how, how they feel about it, because you get an honest answer out of, out of most of the guys, they, they'll just, you know, they'll tell you how they see it, and I kind of appreciate that honesty, it reminds me of my friends in Holland, like, who are straight at the point, just like, yeah, I don't like that.